Ron Canoli is somebody who has been a worship leader in Christian music for a long time. And I remember listening to this guy as a kid, and he's still, you know, doing this today. And good on him for that. But a recent video clip has surfaced of Ron Canoli rebuking a congregant after, well, a distraction was taking place. We're going to talk about what that was, but also is what Ron Canoli did in addressing the congregant the right thing to do or not. We'll dive into it. Welcome, everybody, to Not By Sight News. Yes, a blind Christian guy here reporting to the news of the end times and so much more. Thanks for spending part of your day with me today, reminding you, as always, that we walk by faith, not by sight. And for somebody like me, it's kind of my only option. Hey, I remind you guys as well, if you enjoy, appreciate the work I do here, consider blessing my ministry with a generous donation. There's a couple of ways you could do it. One easy way, just click the super thanks button down below on this video here. That's how you can tip me with a one-time donation of any amount. Whatever you can contribute, it helps and goes a long way. It doesn't matter how small or how big. Or become a premium member of Not By Sight News. Join my Patreon today for as little as five bucks a month. Patreon.com slash Not By Sight News. Link there in the description. When you guys join the Patreon, you get all the videos before they ever hit my main YT platform. I always take care of the Patreon members first. You guys also get the alerts for all the videos, which does not happen with my main YT platform. It's a big reason the videos really don't get many views. Nobody knows I'm posting consistent content. No issue with that over on Patreon. Also there, comment censorship free on all videos and even send me DMs. So check it out again, patreon.com slash news. link in the description. Big thank you to everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so, thank you as well. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. Now again, Ron Canoli, somebody I respect. I've enjoyed his music over the years, very talented. But Ron Canoli would tell you, and he says this here uh, in this clip that we're going to talk about, that he is not an artist. He does not consider himself to be a Christian artist in any way. He considers himself to be a worship leader. And that's all fine and good. I can respect that. But during a recent church service, he was leading a congregation in worship. And there was a distraction that was taking place during this you know, time of worshiping the Lord together. Now, let me say this. There are always going to be distractions, okay, in church worship services. And I open this up for discussion, too, with all of you. Uh, whether you're a worship leader yourself, you've, you've done it at one point, or you're just a regular member of a church, whatever the case, there's always going to be distraction, okay? And I'm talking about a baby crying, somebody, you know, getting up to go to the bathroom, a phone, you know, ringing, Whatever the case, I mean, people talking, it's, it's, it could be anything. It really can. Distractions can happen all the time. But when you're worshiping, if you are truly entered into worship, you know, you won't really notice a lot of those distractions that are, that are going around. Maybe at first, but as you get deeper and deeper into worship, you know, a lot of your surroundings around you, it's just you and God at that point. You know, for those of you that ever been really, truly engaged in Holy Ghost type worship. You know, the distractions just fall by the wayside. But during this particular church service, Ron Canoli stopped the service in its tracks. Now he said this to the pastor of the church. He said, pastor, how much authority do I have right now? And the pastor seemingly gave him the green light to say, okay, you, you have authority. What, what do you have to say? So Canoli stops the service Again, they're singing. And I have this clip. I will put it for you in the description of this video below. And he addresses somebody in the congregation that had apparently been either taking pictures of him or taking video of him. And Canoli talked about how I had to stop the service because what you are doing is that you are taking all of the attention off of the service, off the worship service, and you are putting it on me by recording me or taking pictures of me. And he again said that I am not a worship artist. You know, you, are, you shouldn't be a member of the paparazzi. I am a worship leader and you are distracting this service by what you are doing by taking out your phone. Now, again, church service say most of people are having their phones out. They're taking pictures and videos and they're putting them up on their church's social media to all that. So we know this is something that happens all of the time. But nevertheless, Canoli told this congregant, I'm rebuking you because I love you. 
and I have to bring correction to you because what you are doing is wrong. Now, let me say this. I am not in any way saying that what Ron Canoli said was wrong. I have no issue with what he said at all. However, I don't think that it was necessary to fully stop the service, the worship service, in its tracks over one individual who is taking pictures and video. Because again, this happens in worship services all the time. And maybe there were more doing it too. You know, he just happened to address this one individual. But what that does is that it stops those, you know, the rest of the people in the church who are worshiping as well, it stops them in their tracks. Maybe they didn't even notice the, the person that was taking the pictures of the video. Ron Canoli is leading the worship team. He's leading the church. They're singing, you deserve the glory, you deserve the honor, you know, all of that. And then he stops it to address this one person. Is it really worth it? That's the question. Should an entire worship service be stopped over one person taking pictures or video or whatever distraction? Let's say again, let's go back to the other examples I brought. Well, somebody or multiple people, I mean, this happens all the time too, right? People, multiple people getting up to go to the bathroom to take a crying baby out. I mean, are you going to stop a worship service every time this happens to scold that person? No. I mean, I hope not. If you did that, you really wouldn't have a true worship service because there's always going to be something going on within the church. So in a way, I think that what Ron Canoli did by stopping the worship in its tracks caused I me mean, just as much harm as this individual taking pictures or video. And again, I don't have an issue with what Ron Canoli said. It's just the way that it was handled. I mean, hey, after it's all over with, maybe go up to the person and say, hey, I saw you had a phone out, and maybe talk to them one-on-one -on -one after the service is over. But right there during the middle of the worship to stop it, in its, stop it in its tracks, to ask the pastor for permission, to rebuke this person, all that, I don't know. I, I just think it creates you know too much of a show, really. And all you're doing is just adding more distractions by addressing the distractions. That's just my two cents on it. I just don't feel that, you know, unless we're having some sort of a real, you know, wild thing taking place in a congregation, if, if, if you know, if there's some sort of a fight or, God forbid that happened, but, you know, you affect the rest of the congregation who's worshiping that has no idea this is even happening. And also, you affect the band and the other members of the worship team that are up on the stage with you who are leading you in worship as well. It affects everybody. So I don't think it's enough to just have one individual stop an entire service. I don't think it's worth rebuking them right there in that moment and, and stopping it all. I, again, I think you should just address them after the service is over and, and do it that way. Or, or, you know, set some sort of a a rule in advance for no cell phones or whatever. I mean, good luck with that. That'll be hard to do. But anyway, that's just my two cents on it. I like Ron Canoli. I enjoy his music. Uh, but this was my take. And again, I will put the clip for you in the description down below. Watch it for yourself. See what you think. I want to hear from you guys again, especially if you're somebody who has led worship in the past or you currently do, or just maybe you in a church service in general. What distractions have you seen while you were worshiping, I mean, do you believe like what I'm saying, that if you were really entered into true worship, that you're not really going to let a distraction bother you? If your eyes are shut and you're praising the Lord and you're not going to see somebody with a phone out taking pictures or video. So let me know what you think. What I want to do right now, something I do on all these videos, and that's end this video on hope. It's part of my ministry outreach. Of course, I talk about the end time Bible prophecy headlines, keep you guys up to speed and everything else going on. I do it because, yes, we are in the last days, really the final hours, and Christ is coming soon. For anybody watching right now, though, if you've never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you would like to do so, I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. This is a prayer you could do in your own words, but I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. First thing you want to do right off the top, acknowledge you are a sinner. That's something that we all are. The good news is that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world as he died and rose again for you and me. He paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin, which means to turn from sin, not just to say you're sorry and then jump back to your old ways, but to actually turn from sin, which are those lifestyles, patterns, habits, behaviors 
things in your life that go against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away, and the Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. Again, more info down below. That, that clip will be there for you in the description to check out. Don't forget the links to donate to the ministry are there as well. Join the Patreon for as little as five bucks a month, patreon.com slash news. link in the description, or just hit the super thanks button down below on this video here where you can tip me with a one-time donation. It's all a great blessing. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk. Be soon.